All right, so this is lab 2.3.7, navigating the iOS. Again, I just opened it up about a minute ago. We're going to run through the scenarios, just run through it. So there are two parts, three parts, with each part having several steps. Again, we're going to establish basic connectivity, explore the exec mode, and then set our clock. All right, so read through the little scenario. So establish basic connectivity. Step one, connect PC to the switch using a console cable. So cables we know are down here by the lightning bolt. Don't just use the lightning bolt. You can mouse over the cable to see what they are. So here we have a straight through, here we have the crossover, here we have a fiber, phone, coax, serial DCE, serial DTE, octal, and more. All right, so what we want to do is the light blue cable, that's the console cable. Click on the PC, that goes to the RS-232. And on the other end, goes to the console cable of the switch. So why is that the case? Oftentimes, we don't think about what that cable looks like console. And if we were in class, I could show you what it looks like. And this is what the console cable looks like. It's a serial or RS-232 on one side and an ethernet on the other end. Sometimes called a rollover, but it is the console cable. All right, so with that, we've done that guy, we've done that guy. All right, so we're gonna go on to the step two. Establish a terminal session with switch one. So click on PC one. We have different tabs up here. More often than not, we're going to be using the desktop. And then we have our terminal, we have a command prompt, we have a VPN, we have the address. We have a lot more other features. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up the terminal command. These are the default terminal connection settings for RS-232. That's acceptable. Once we get in, we are accessing the switch console cable or the console through the console cable that would give us this connection this connection is being fed through the console port on the switch tap enter a few times all right we are in here we can see our switch name and the symbol lets us know what mode we are in so what we can do is we can do a question mark to see what's available we have connection, disable, disconnect, enable, exit, logout, ping, resume, show SSH, telnet, terminal, and trace route. A lot of different options. So let's do T, question mark. Notice with a T and a question mark, we can see every command that starts with T. If we do D and a question mark, D, question mark. If you just do D, you only see what's available with D. And there are multiple commands starting with the D, so you get an ambiguous command. All right, with the question mark, my keyboard stuck a little bit, so we can see there's two commands starting with D, disable and disconnect. The spacing is important. If we do T, E, for example, space question mark, well, we get, again, an ambiguous command because there are two commands, telnet and terminal, that start with TE. So what happens if we do TEM space question mark? Oh, T-E-R-M, sorry, question mark. Well, the interesting part is when you do a space question mark, you get the next part of the command. Uh, ping, space, question mark. Ping, space, question mark. Then we can see either a word or IPv6. So 
The question mark when it is right next to something will give you everything that starts with those first few letters. If it's space question mark, it will give you the additional or next step of the command. So we've done this, we've done this, we've done the context help. All right, so for our step two, exploring the exe or the exec mode, what we're gonna do is type, but I'm gonna do clear. Nope, that's one, uh, that, that's okay. If you do commands that it doesn't know about, it will try to look them up. And so you'll get a translate and you'll get this process. And often that's just what you get for fat fingering. And that normally means you have to wait. Oftentimes you could be told control Z or control C to break it. Doesn't always work. Your best bets is just give it time. It will take a minute, but it will eventually time out. So while that's timing out, let's read through it. We're gonna go through what commands start with uh, are available at the uh, prompt. Once we get that, we will do en, and we can go ahead and question mark it or tab it. All right, so I'll do question mark, that's what's available, en, question mark there's only one command starting with e and that's enable if you hit tab it will auto complete the beginning part of that command if you do question mark you can see if there's a level or a criteria either one works if we type um, te hit tab nothing happens because telnet terminal all begin with te so we have to be specific. Like if we do P, there's only one command starting with P. So that's why that works. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's go back to enable. Hit tab, hit enter. Notice the prompt changes. The prompt went from a carrot to a pound. That means we went from one mode to another. If you do question mark, you can now see there are a lot more commands that are available under this mode. The pound sign is our exec mode or our user exec mode. This gives us additional commands. And you'll notice clear is an executive command. <clears throat> so we've done, oh, we'll do C, hit tab. Again, there's multiple commands that start with C, clear, clock, configure, connect, copy. So there's a lot there. So we are looking at uh, step one C, we've already done enable, we've done D, we did uh, our prompt. One command starts with the letter C in the user exec mode. How many commands are displayed we're now with the privilege? We now see five, clear clear, clock, configure, connect, and copy. You cannot just type C in its space because again, there's multiple commands. If you do CO and question mark, there's three commands that start with CO. If you do CL, question mark, there's only two commands that start with CL. All right, so that takes care of that part. So now let's go on to step two which is getting to our global configuration mode. To go from our exec mode to our global configuration mode, if you read through all of these, you can see that configure, enter configuration mode. So I'm gonna do con with an F in the tab, that's my configure. I can do question mark if there's additional parts of the command and there are, I get a terminal, or I'm just gonna do configure and hit enter and see what happens. Well, when I hit enter, it asks, what do I wanna configure from, the terminal, memory, or network? Terminal is the default, so I'll do T, hit enter, and now I'm at a configure in parentheses and pound. 
That is our global configuration mode. If you do question mark, again, you see way, way, way more commands that are now listed here. That is because commands are done at specific levels. You can only do certain commands at certain levels. You'll notice here we have clock, and in our exact mode, we also add clock. So you can do clock in certain areas, or you can do clock in multiple areas. Not all commands are able to be uh, done this way. Host name can only be done in global configuration. Privileges can only be done in global configuration. So there are commands that are only done in certain areas. Do keep that in mind. All right, so if I type exit, I can back out of my global configuration, get back to my user exec mode. That puts me at part three, step one. We want to do show clock. We can see it is the appropriate date and time. Uh, not really, it's not February 28, 1993. So we may actually want to go ahead and fix that. What we can do is we'll do clock. Hit enter. Uh, the command is still looking for additional things. So I'm going to do clock, question mark. It wants us to use the set command. So we'll do set, space, question mark. Now it wants us to set the hours, minutes, and seconds. All right, so for me, it is 03.57, zero seconds, space, question mark. What's the month of the year? All right, so it wants us to do 0, 1, 3, 1, 2, 0, 3, 5. It does not like that. So some of these are not going to be the, the most perfect. So it is 23. It is 4. Again, it's not enjoying that. So as we are looking at some of this, we can see it wants us to use the month or the days of the month. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So notice here we have time UTC Sun Feb 28, 1993. Let's try that. APR 32023. Ah. APR for April 30th, 2023. And now if we do a show clock, we now see the appropriate time based off of what our time is. You can also do it with the date, day of the month, the month, and then the year at the end. So can we shorthand some of this. So let's look at additional command messages. So if we do CL tab, we get nothing. That is because CL tab by itself could be either clear or clock. If we do clock, we do enter. Again, we already know that. What about if we do clock Set 25 colon zero 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 zero. Nope, nope, doesn't like. My keyboard is just not working today. Clock set two five. It 
It doesn't like the 24, 25 hours a day. It just, it doesn't work. Or if we do 32 days, that will also throw an error. There's no month with 32 days. So if we change 25 to 15, that will be the 24 hour clock. It will say, nope, 32 does not make sense. That is because I, there are no months with 32 days. Let's check results. Again, this one was not actually a specific step-by-step -step looking for critical components that were scored. So this one should show complete. All right, so that is this lab in a nutshell. Thank you.